Time say Pamela Ashley here along with Susan Sinclair to do a Cree interview on how it was to grow up for you versus how it is to grow up for the younger generation now in Green Lake. That's a Kakioni Waku Magadak, Kitam Scat Nawa, Susan Sinclair, Sikasia, Mina, P. P. Suis, Sikasia, Kayasu Magi, Pigian Muta, Gok, Pusagi, Nika, Sika, Dig, Mina Lakbert, Kayasu Magi, uh, Igi, Spitiano, T. Miskuchi was Kaganik, Kayasuga, Igi, um, Extamagianota, Egua, Eupigian, Nima, my Sika, Supranik Sinclair, Egua Nipa, my Sika, George Sinclair. Egua Egia to skit Nima, my Branik Sinclair, St. Pascal School, Egomina Nipa, George Sinclair. I get to skip my name. I go my name. I get to skip Central Farm. I go. I go figure. I go to. Mstahe. Mstahe. Oh my. I. Mamsiano. Oh my. Ni hiawi wen hiwa. Kakio ki guai. No kum. Kisi no kum i i ki. Oksna, oksna me ma. Ki du isikasut, ki du mina Thunderbird isikasut. Kaya suma egi wigiano ta tansitigui ispitian mana maga kigam ta ta ay na niyo sa 1981 egi ispitian egi tuhtiano ma kisce. Oxnamagi when University of Saskatchewan Kasikatik. Ega ni matis na magi ano manihiao iwan kaya asisitigwe aputigwe ni stum tano askia. Ego mi na ni matis tayan kahyo kigwe ni ni guatu ma atuskian misuwe oxnamagi an kahyo kigwe. Mia sini pi tuhtiana nuht uta aguak piu sagegenik mina lagbert. We're going to be here for our walk for our young lady, Taya Ray. I'm here um, as the matriarch of our family as my mother's been gone to uh, help my niece, uh, Lorianne, and um, all our relatives to go through all that process. And um, Hopefully we can continue to heal and move forward in a good way. Uh, Taya was such a beautiful young lady. I always remember her smile. And I was auntie, she always used to say. So, you know, always, always remembering her in a good way. And that's the important thing of the missing murdered indigenous women, girls in 2S is to remember these people in a good way because they were once a part of our lives and somebody very important to us and we will still remember and honor them in that in that way. So she is asking me what year I was born. I was already born in 1963. I can't believe it's been that long. I am 60 years old. I have two children of my own, uh, Jacinta and Jared, and um, they are living in Edmonton and we're all living there with my husband. Um, who's from uh, the Mi'kmaq Nation in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Um, I was born here, well actually in Meadow Lake at the hospital, but um, grew up here all of my life. My parents' names uh, when they were born was Veronique Morin before she uh, married my father, George Sinclair. Um, history of my childhood, I was involved in everything possible in my home community. I started working probably when I was 10 years old. I started babysitting uh, for Penny and um, Franklin Carrier. Uh, I helped uh, raise their children every day. I would drive, walk them to school, bring them back, feed them because Penny was working with Northland School Division and she was gone most of the time and she would get, wouldn't get home until late. 
and then Franklin was working as well with uh, resource officers then, so I was responsible for their children for a couple years. Um, I was involved in sports, I was a volleyball player, I was a setter, a hitter, whatever. Played ball, played every possible sports, attended all kinds of um, winter, summer games. So for me at that time, it was um, a very good time to grow up in our home community because everybody was still involved in community and understood what community was. So it took a whole community to, to build us mm -hmm. uh, as the children growing up in our community. And there was four of us that graduated in, when I left in 1981. That's Gerald Moran, Gwen Bishop, myself, and Ron Ross. So each one of us took our, our collective paths and have been, we've lost uh, one of our people already, Ron Ross passed away. Um, but, you know, just remembering that experience and everybody working together, we com had a combination of grade 10, 11, and 12 in high school. So we all kind of worked together and learned uh, together mm -hmm. and uh, helped one another uh, so that we were successful and we graduated and left and went on our respective ways. Uh, I've been doing a lot. I work with Health Canada. I'm presently teaching at the University of Alberta. Uh, I do a Young Indigenous Women Circle of Leadership program that for the past 16 years. And in that program, we teach our young ladies from 10 years old to 18 the rites of passage, our language, which is uh, Cree Michif is what we teach there. And then we also teach them on the land teachings that we learned growing up. I just want to share a little story about uh, my uncle Marius Bouvier and uh, Gilbert Le Liberty. They were, uh, Gilbert Le Liberty was my uh, godfather as well. And uh, my godmother was my great-great-grandmother, uh, Catherine Kennedy, or Kidu, as we called her. So I spent a lot of time with her. And she's the one who taught me how to do pretty much everything I know. Um, and uh, also my mother's mother, who was from uh, Canoe Lake First Nation. Her name was Agnes Opikikiu. But what happened in that situation her name when they first lived in Canoe Lake was Kwaskwipagan, uh, Jumping Peanut. That was their last name when she was growing up. And then when residential school and when, when the Indian agents came in, they changed. She had uh, five siblings. So the three siblings, my granny, Agnes, OPQQ, um, her brother, uh, Peter, and... Um, she had an another brother, Louis. They were sent to Isle Cross from there to that mission, and their name was changed from Guaspipagan to Pikikiu. And by the time they gone, oh, Big Barney, sorry, not not him. He went the other way. Big Barney. By the time they got the Isle Cross mission, their last name was changed to Lasandre. So they had three name changes. Wow. So the other three was Sister Therese Arcand. Um, her brother Raul and Leo and Lu, uh, Louis, again the same change. Their name was Quasquipagan or Pikiku, and by the time they make, made it to Duck Lake, it was changed to Arcand. So the Indian agents changed their names. So those six siblings all had different last names. So the three in Isla Cross had different last names, Lasandre, and the other ones that went to uh, Duck Lake were Arcands. So, needless to say, when we did our, um, our family tree, we didn't know the connection for a while. And I used to wonder why Sister Teres is what we called her, because she was a nun with the Grey Nuns, used to come and stay with us. And she always stayed in our bedroom, so we had to move out of the bedroom. And then one, finally one day I asked, I said, why does this nun keep staying and coming to stay with us? And we loved her, you know, don't get me wrong. And, but I didn't get that connection yeah. until uh, my mom told me. She said, that's, uh, that's my mother's sister. So she always came to spend time with us that is every cool. year. Oh, that's and awesome. she had such a beautiful voice. She used to sing these beautiful songs all the time. 
It was almost like an operatic voice. She was a beautiful lady. Wow. But uh, my grandmother from my mother's side, she's the one who taught us all about the medicines and taught us about that traditional way of living from, from the Cree perspective. And then my other grandmother was uh, Gigi, or Gigi as we called her. She's in that storybook uh, you can get at Gabrielle Dumont Institute about her and her sister, uh, Gleisha Bear. Two girls lost in the bush is what that story was. That's about my grandmother and her sister. And Nihio was her, her nickname, or what we called her. She lived on Flying Dust Reserve. She was married mm -hmm. onto that reserve. So there's quite a quite a history behind our family and just just how our family was dispersed a long time ago when, when residential school came in and when the agents came in and then recapturing that and trying to find out where we come from and uh, the whole identity. And to me that's one of the things that I go around teaching and talking about identities, I talk about boundaries, and they talk about our traditional teachings from both perspectives. Because as far as I'm concerned, I walk in the best of both worlds, the First Nations and the Métis. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I passed on to my children. And I still continue to pass that on as I'm going to do these workshops everywhere. I'm like, I'm all over the place. I went to Cuba at mm -hmm. the University of Hoagie. My, my really good friend, uh, Dorothy Thunder, she teaches at the university as well. And we went to the University of Holguin to teach 35 students of Cuban descent how to speak our Plains Cree and the Machif languages. So in that 10 days that we were there, those people were able to converse for about 30 minutes in our indigenous languages. So as, as you were telling me, there's a lot of our people here that um, are not practicing what they learned growing up. Definitely. So that's my message to everybody is, remember your mind and your heart are connected and you have a blood memory. So just take that time to center yourself and find who you are and the languages that you learned in your stomach, in your parents, your mother's stomach, because it's there. You just gotta, get to that point and remember all the language and some of the old Cree words that you may have learned. And that's so important and that's what I'm doing in the, this part of my life. I retired in 2019 after 36 years of teaching and that being at the university level as well as from preschool, kindergarten, all the way up to university and I'm, st and I'm right now teaching uh, indigenous teachers the Michif language and culture so that they can go incorporate that into their uh, classrooms in Alberta. And then in the fall, I will be doing that at the university as well. Right now I'm developing the program uh, with Rupert's Land Institute in uh, Alberta. And it's lots of fun because I get to go to these different sites and I get to see the medicine wheels out on the land and then I get to go to Whitford Lake and see how the goose is so important to that to those people there and how the goose is so important to us as indigenous people and how that goose encompasses kinship and that's the important thing is to remember where you're coming from and to remember that family is so important. So that's why I'm saying I'm inviting you guys to all come to this gathering that we're having for Taya because it's our family honoring her and it's our family bringing everybody together to heal and to work together as community like we did a long time ago. Um, so as I said, compared to what it is now, I'm not familiar with what's really going on here because I've been gone for a long time, but I'm assuming we still have that revitalization because I saw my sister-in-law re-teaching the students and that was so wonderful to see her teaching the students the traditional dancing. dancing. Yes. yes, because as I said, our family grew up both ways. Like my daughter, my daughter dances, danced that as well and she also danced uh, square dancing with Rhea Memorial Dancers. 
So always in our lives and in our families, that's what it's been like. We used to go to powwows, we used to go everywhere, you know. I used to dance up until I was about 13 years old and somebody took my, my regalia, which my Aunt Bibi's Florence Red Iron made for me. And I helped her with the beading and also making the regalia. And then somebody took it. And I, I accept that responsibility that I didn't look after it very well because at the same time I'm under child reserve, I was playing ball. Mm -hmm. So I didn't put my regalia away and put it in a safe place and then it was gone. So I was kind of doing two things at the same time. My advice for future generation is to um, continue finding who you are and where you belong and most importantly remembering your identity as an Indigenous person. Finding out and asking anybody, go to elders, offer your tobacco, offer your protocol and give them a gift because that's knowledge that they're passing on to you and always honoring that and being respectful always saying you know thank you very much and being grateful for being alive every day thank creator Kisimantu for being alive I'm going to just say a prayer for you guys today uh, and the other thing I'm going to share with you is a beautiful song that was given to me by my friend Leo McGilvery. Um, it's, it's an indigenous uh, song and it's about the spirit woman. Because I think that's so important for us to honor our grandmothers. They, they're the people who taught us and who are there always in our lives and showed us our way. And a lot of our grandparents are looking after their children's children. So this will give them an opportunity to listen to this song and be able to remember that we are resilient, number one. We love our children and we're working very hard to bring our families together. So I'm gonna just sing it. If I close my eyes, that means I'm gone somewhere else. So, uh, here we go. Oki si go esquel Oh, 
share that song because it's so important for our young people to remember that we need to honor our grandparents we need to honor our grandmothers our matriarchs to show us and continue to take care of us and to help us move forward in a good way because we need to pass on our traditions to our next generation and it's up to us the youth right now the the adults in the community to, to remember that. That's our job and that's what we're here for. And uh, growing up here, I was lucky enough to experience that. And I'm so grateful and thankful to all the people that have been in my life and showed me. And the elders and the knowledge keepers and, and the medicine people that I, I work and learn from right now and continue to do and relearning what it's like to attend ceremony and relearning all that again and have been doing this now for probably about 20 years and uh, our singing sun dance is actually happening tonight in Edmonton and Muscogee's so I work with the Saddleback family who adopted me when I first moved to uh, Edmonton as well as the Fridell family the Métis Fridells and I'm so grateful for that and these are the, the Métis people around Lac St. Anne. One of the things uh, I want to uh, share as well is I was probably seven years old when we first started going to the Lac St. Anne pilgrimage just out of Edmonton and Alberta Beach and a lot of our families still do that and that was so awesome because then you get to meet different people from all over different nationalities from different clans, different tribes, different nations. And I remember our family, we have one specific place that we've been forever when we go, that's our plot or whatever mm -hmm. when we go. All my aunties, my uncles, all my relatives from Fort Smith and wherever come down and that's where we all camp together. And then right next to us is a group from, from Ray Edso and they're from way up north in Alberta and Northwest Territories. So what we would do is we'd put a big tarp out and we'd all share our food. And to me that reminds me of what family is. We used to go to a place called Vermilion here. Families, we used to go and sing Jimmy Cash and everybody would be playing fiddle, everybody, you know, all our families would camp out there. We'd pick berries, they'd hunt and gather. Then the other time we'd go to uh, South Bay by La Crosse, again doing the same thing and just having those communities and then Pine House and everybody joining us. So that's how we all know one another. By going out and, and meeting people and spending time and the other thing was a big thing was going to the Stampede in Middle Lake because you could meet everybody <laughs> from the north, from, from PA and wherever and Everybody would make it a point, like my relatives would come all the way from Prince George would see the Muxlows, yeah, just, just to come yeah. down for that. So just uh, just trying to find that connection and, and that uh, movement towards bringing families together from all over. That's what I want to say to our future generations is do the best you can, work hard, and hard work will get you somewhere. Thank you.